What about China? Do you find, I guess, to be a, a, like an example or a symbolism to uphold and bring out here for a May Day? Living, lifting 800 million people out of poverty. Out of poverty. So, like, uh, you mean like recently, right? Yeah. What do you think about uh, China's uh, past history? Like, there's a lot of well, countries who have like bad past history in terms of, like Germany and the United States. What do you think about China's past history in, in their regards towards like not doing so great for a lot of their people? Not doing so great. How? Uh, you could say like maybe with the start with the Great Famine uh, and that led to about 60 million deaths in China. When you embargo a country with every single power in the world and then it has a famine, whose fault is that really? Uh, what do you think about then? Uh, well, that is a good question. Embargo does have an effect. Not people say that. Like, people say like there's an effect right now. Like North Korea, maybe that might force it to finally like open China, up. For China was now. also a feudal country at the time. We all need to be aware of that, of the historical situation that China was in, and for the historical situation that China is in, what it may it may do with what it could, and it did fucking fantastically. For a third world country, it lifted 800 million people out of poverty, and I think we should be damn proud of that. What do you think about like Mao's uh, personal agriculture reforms? Like yeah. outside of the embargo, it was him that said you got to plant seeds together because he felt like happy seeds grow together, and that led to the horrible uh, ruins of agriculture there. That people will say that led to the mass starvation of the yeah, parents eating their children from that. You know, I wouldn't say like maybe embargo can have an effect, but also their internal agricultural practices endowed by Mao. Would would, would have been a big particular effect from that consequences. Yeah, it was. It's a combination of factors from several different things. But to be honest, that's a, that's a drop in the bucket compared to what the rest of the countries have been doing to it. What it's from its very existence, it was declared war upon by every single power on the world. They tried to drop nukes on it several times. They massacred millions of Chinese people in Korea. In World War II, 20 million people died. There was a massive famine of five million people in the in the province of Hunan. There was fa there's famines throughout all of China's history. Famines are a very common thing. Russia, it's the very same thing. Famines throughout their history. Famines used to be a very common thing until relatively recently. Right, would you say like some of the social common denominator is that in terms of socialism or variants of communism, it's difficult to they run into economic calculation problem in terms of allocation resources. When you're constantly being invaded and imperialized, colonized, it's kind of hard to reallocate resources while you're constantly under threat from an outside force. Okay, so you can have outside force. You know, you had like maybe the, the opium crisis with Britain. You can say that you had Japan attacking uh, China for a period of time. You had a rape, rape of Nanking. You had that as well. The civil war. What I think then, uh, but you can't deny though uh, Mao himself also being personally responsible and put a liability on him as well in terms of about the flaws the, of the mass of deaths Zedong all day, every day, for hours on end. But at the end you of the day, you yeah, acknowledge that that he did everyone, do. Everyone, everyone acknowledges that. All the Chinese people, all these fucking Westerners with your fucking minds convoluted and thinking that Chinese 1.5 billion Chinese people are being manipulated by the government, the Chinese government. Y'all got y'all got your heads fucked if you if you think that's reality. I mean, it's not. You guys are highly distorting what reality is. Marxists in China oftentimes criticize Mao Zedong, yet Mao Zedong is at 90%. Favorability ratings among the Chinese population. What do you think about the I think uh, Chinese people know more about Mao Zedong than any white person here? I would say though it's difficult for them to speak out against Mao. Uh, you know, you get there's secret police that'll round you up. You know, they had this uh, experiment that he had in which, like, uh, what, the we great. Are today. Well, here, yeah, and we're not in China. We could speak spoke openly about That's this sort of not, stuff, right? No, you can speak openly. Black people cannot. Latino people cannot. I'm Latino. I can speak openly. That's I don't have problems with that. But Bolivian. you're white passing, man. That's my white passing. Yeah. So are you in charge of telling people whether no. they're white or not? No. Are albino people white no. passing? Do you say they have white passing? No. Because black people can't be albino and they're kind of, kind of white, right? But at the right? end of the day, you're here in this country and you're at a higher state than most people in this country right now. You have to recognize that. And you're in a position of privilege. What privilege do I have? We all have privilege more than black and Latino people. Most black and Latino people do in this country. What, what privilege does a Latino have more than a white person? I didn't say you had more privilege than me. And you're, 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 you're trying to what, see. What you're trying to convolute. You're trying no, no, to. No, no, I'm trying to understand. You're trying to derail. This, a lot of people don't understand this you're sort of trying conversation. to derail this conversation because this has nothing to do with what the original conversation is. You saw me carrying the Chinese flag. You wanted to come here to curious, get yeah. your video here. Yeah. And so here we are. Okay. 
you're not you're trying to derail the conversation. Well, you brought up white privilege. I'm yeah. kind of curious to yeah, understand I'm, more I'm, so I'm that I'm sort trying, of stuff. I'm trying to I'm trying to bring up that in this country, there is a huge amount of flaws, and people can go about and say that they are proud of their country. I can go and say that I'm proud of China because it lifted out 800 million people out of poverty and is still doing something and is planning on eradicating pro poverty by 2020. I, I would say in terms of uh, lessening a lot of their communist control, they've done a, a good deal. You could say towards that. Uh, I think maybe they're uh, they have a lot more Good towards deal. of um, responsibility towards North Korea ending the war. Now a lot of people want to give it to Trump, but I think North uh, China putting the pressure. Yeah, but I also like to uh, examine this stuff kind of soberly in terms of China. You know, because they have a lot of uh, a huge mass murder deaths. You know, over 60 million people. You know, there's people who come from China and talk about these kind of issues as well. It's not just uh, you who, who view China and say, yeah, this is an awesome country. But people come from China. Well, do, you, do you think that also their voices are discredited when they? criticize their home country that's not, I'm talking about actual Chinese people living in China yeah, China right people now. who escape from China here when they criticize their home country do you think that they're making it up and then they're lying so the Chinese Americans have more say than Chinese people actually do that's what you're saying Chinese Americans, I mean, American Chinese people that the American government favors have more say on what the Chinese government actually is than what the 1.5 billion people in China actually do this is what you're saying I'm saying, are you discrediting people from China who's escaped and discuss like the horrid conditions in China that are coming to the U.S. No. from their own experience, being no. actually from China? I mean, don't you think there's some valid concern for them to speaking out against China yeah. as well? There, there's people speaking out about China right now. It's actually pretty common in China. There is protests in China. There are people in China that are protesting the government of China. <laughs> I'm just saying. All right, okay. If, if you think that those people can affirm, well, I mean, there's a lot of documented cases for people who even come here and have family out there. If they speak ill of China, sometimes their family just disappears in China. What, what do you think about those kinds of situations? It's not particularly like to have like the freedom of speech. I mean, they have like a citizen score in which like if you're... If you're what cases? What uh, cases? Great many cases. Look up uh, like a uh, Chinese uh, uh, model. For example, she, she competes, she goes, she tours around uh, like the world. What's the name of this? Yeah, model? I could get you the name of the model. Right. Not a problem. Uh, so she speaks landishly about how the situation in, in China. Let me find Chinese. No, but you can't you can't deny that there that the U.S. government gives a mass amount of credence to political to political refugees that come from the country that were kicked out by the Chinese government that were given aid by the U.S. government and the U.S. government brought into their country for a very specific reason. You can't then go about and say, okay, well, what about the Chinese, what about these uh, Chinese people coming from China? We've been ignoring Chinese people coming from China for the past, like, hundreds of years or so. Like, Ch the Chinese gov uh, the U.S. government, right after the People's Republic of China came in, they fired every single Chinese speaker in the State Department. We've never given a single fuck about what people, the 1.5 billion, 1.5 billion people living in China. We've never given a single fuck about what they care about. They're just a bunch of, they're just a bunch of drones. What do you think you can, what do you think uh, China should advocate now to help their, their people? What do you think, what, what more could you think could, could they do? Uh, Xi Jinping is doing pretty well with the great, uh, the anti-corruption purges. They need to keep it up because there is unfortunately a lot of corruption that needs to be culled. There needs to be mass more. There needs to be more redistribution. There isn't enough, and China needs to pick up on that because they need to get they need to get connected, reconnected back with their roots. And a lot of Chinese youth agree with my sentiment here. Do you have a lot of Chinese uh, students here as well? We have Chinese students. They don't feel comfortable coming here because of people like this with the cameras. Taking so, pictures, so getting nobody, them deported nobody by the U.S. government. Nobody here in China, then you're saying that there, are, but, there but, are Chinese people here. You just have to go and look for them. We're okay, not yeah. we're not going to put Chinese people here for you guys to just. I mean, I have Chinese them. friends, and they say they say differently. I mean, would, would you ever be open and talking with one of them and their experiences? I've talked to uh, many people. Okay, I've heard their. Well, experience. yeah. So I'm saying I've, I've heard many stories with my friends from China, and they they seem conflicting with the stories and that they're I've giving. I've heard yeah. many stories of when I was in China. You went and to China. It sounds How was that? It was good. I went to the poorest region of China, Yunnan province. And what was your experience there? It was poverty. Poverty? Yeah. Do you think, um, I guess, being in China, I guess, uh, did you feel like, uh, I don't know, 
But the government's helping a lot of those uh, kinds of people the out there? The government is helping a lot. I mean, the People's Liberation Army is one of the most favorably viewed militaries in the world compared to the U.S. military. A lot of the U.S. citizenship feels openly uneasy about the U.S. military, whereas the People's Liberation Army rarely goes invading other people's countries and is only there to actually help people in crises. All right, so you would be against like uh, United States imperialism over the world, right? So anti-war, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd be against uh, Chinese and the provocation of Taiwan, then you would say, uh, right? Uh, Taiwan has always been China. Also, you just, like, well, I mean, China, China, Taiwan is China. Don't you think people have the freedom to secede and create their own community if they don't want to be a part of their community? They voluntarily, consensually want to separate. When secession comes up, secession only matters again when it's in the U.S.'s interest. They see Taiwan only as an air base in the Pacific. Military, the military advisors of the United States have muttered this several times to refer to Taiwan, to refer to Okinawa, to refer to all these Pacific islands as their aerial land, as their bases against China. There is an overreach of military bases overseas for sure, but what I think, what about the people in Taiwan who just want to create their own country? They don't want to be part of China. They just want to be their own people. Okay, so Taiwan. Where do, you, you're familiar with the history of Taiwan, yes? Uh, enlighten me about the history of Taiwan. I'm not going to enlighten anyone. Well, we're I would. I would, I would, I would go and actually research Taiwan, the history of Taiwan. The Taiwanese government is only here because it's a remnant of the nationalist government that's been prolonged and allowed to exist thanks to U.S. involvement in the Chinese Civil War. So you don't think there's actually genuine interest for people wanting to voluntarily think, secede and create their own people, community? I think there's people that want to secede. There's always people that want to secede. There's Uyghurs that want to secede. Uyghurs who, of course, are supported by uh, the Turkish fascists and Daesh. So, again, I'm hesitant there as well. Right. So do you think, though, if, if the people in Taiwan do want to secede and be their own country, they still have the right to secede, yeah. right? Okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean just because China but, claims but, over them. Just because, the U, just because the U.S. wants that land, yeah, I think the that you should that get out of there too. Yeah, I agree with you with that. But it's not going to happen. That's not reality. You're thinking in an idealistic world. You're in an imaginary world. That's not what's happening. U.S. isn't just going to pull out of the Pacific. That's not reality. So it's not reality to think that China would leave Taiwan alone if the, yes, if the that's U.S. Not at all reality. to leave them alone, right? That's China would want to conquer them. That's been their one policy, has been reunification. Since day one, reunification, right. their main thing. Right. So it's not like a fantasy so to believe that these people who want to volunteer to secede, they'll be met with violent, 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 violent force. That's, that's to force not, to be a you're part distorting, of a, you're distorting. Well, that's factual. what happens if the U.S. secedes, I mean, reality, right? So our fantasies thinking, you know, uh, if the U.S. will leave voluntarily because, you know, they have an interest there, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. China has an interest because they're nearby. They don't yeah. want a U.S. military base next to them as well, right? Uh, but if they do leave, you know, that China will come in there violently to reunify, as you were, and not voluntarily, despite the wishes of the people who live on that yeah. island. Don't you think then maybe we should side with the people on the island and resist no. the reunification no. No, that's that, forced? That's, that's not, no. Do you no. think people should be forced to yeah. be into relationships I they don't want to be into? Be. So you think the people because of Taiwan... Ta the people of Taiwan, the people of Taiwan only existed there because they genocided the original Taiwanese population. They're nothing more than Han people that have moved there over the recent centuries. They're all a bunch of... Most of the vast majority of them that hold power are remnants of the nationalist government or remnants of the fa Japanese fascists that were originally holding dominance in that island. So excuse me for not siding with them. Well, I mean, these things happened generations ago, right? I can't no, really follow. It's still happening right now. There's still politicians who have remnants of fascist ancestry and will hearken well, back to that. I'm, I'm talking about like the new people born in Taiwan, right? I can't really fault there's individual still, for crimes of uh, older generations. If that's what you're saying, that is true, right? Taiwan that recognize themselves as Japanese. And if you don't think that, you should visit Taiwan. Maybe one day. Uh, what do you think about, uh, if, if that's the case that you're making, right, in terms of uh, like their occupation of an island, Taiwan, and that's why I say they have no right there to be there, give it to Chinese. Don't you think the same thing could be said of Cyprus in terms of like uh, Turkish Muslim forces invading that island? Because there were no really any Turkish people in Cyprus. It was, it was Greek it like until they wanted to... Uh, people in Cyprus, uh, is it? I've been to Cyprus. There's a lot of people in Cyprus. And so I would say uh, their invasion of it caused that the, the civil war to start, right? Because Turkey did not want to give up claim over that island because they wanted to succeed and they wanted to actually be part of that's, Greece in that that's country. That's a fundamentally different thing. Chinese actually has... The Chinese actually have a long history with Taiwan and have actual history with Taiwan. Taiwan wouldn't exist if it wasn't birthed out of the repercussions of the Chinese Civil War that the U.S. prolonged. So, if you are siding with this U.S. puppet state in 
the middle of the Pacific that couldn't exist without U.S. support, that only exists right now because of the theft of the wealth of the Chinese people, and then the evacuation of that wealth to some island off in, uh, just off the coast. I don't know. You're, you're backing a government that stole all of China, China's wealth and actually was one of the causes for those famines you were talking about. Well, I don't really back any government, so I don't back uh, the government I mean, of uh, Taiwan either. I will, I will back the people to separate, to abolish their own government as well. Isn't that an interesting, that's, that's comfortable, that's a comfortable position. That's, to abolish you, government? You don't have to actually have a lot of realistic stances, you know. Well, governments have been abolished, you know, it doesn't that's necessarily, not, it's, that's it's a history not, of, not world history of that happening. That's not re necessarily a re realistic analysis analysis of the situation. You're just saying, oh, I think all governments should be abolished, well, you just therefore that. that I was supporting their, their, the Taiwanese government, which, yeah. which I don't. Well, well yeah. that's, uh, you, uh, you kind of are here. How's that? You're here with your camera, yeah. you're, you're giving credence to this, and you're bringing, you're bringing questions and information that were conjured up by the U.S. media apparatus, and you're using that to question me, instead of actually having, like, I don't know. What did your own your own research and own research? stuff on okay. the subject. All right, I would say my own research and on the subject has seen governments create democides in the 20th century that caused over the deaths of like hundreds of million, including including the U.S. since World War II. Right, so I don't trust any government, not the U.S. government, not the Chinese government, not the Taiwanese government. I think they're a big detriment to the lives of peaceful people who want to live voluntarily, consensually, without politicians forcing them and telling them how to live their own lives. Okay, but so so again, this is this is you as being someone over here and you're going and you're saying that the Chinese people that overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly support the Chinese government. I mean, saying, it's not like they have freedom of speech if they don't, you know, they have a citizen's rating score on them. You know, if you, you kind of say things out of line, again, you disappear. Again, this is, a, this is another example of you just using everything that the U.S. media is just popping out about China and then you're just spewing this. It's not just China, That's these things happen in, in other communist-like countries. Uh, okay. Cuba, for example, it happens all the time in Cuba. Again, I wouldn't call them communist countries at all, and they wouldn't call themselves communist countries, and no one would refer to themselves as communist country because communist country is actually an incorrect term. That's not at all a correct term. So the, the, the people who escape Cuba saying Communi this communist Communi country, you Communi discount their voices too? The, you're ridiculous, man. My grandfather, my grandfather escaped from Cuba. Why did he leave he, Cuba? He goes Cuba because they were threatening uh, people, members of his uh, family's relatives. They're disappearing. Okay, yeah. What? He ran he, in a dust crop plane. He escaped with a toy compass and a knife to fight off sharks. Why did the Cuban was a farmer. government? Was he a farmer or did he was just a farmer. farm and exploit labor? Defi so he, was he was a farmer. There's hundreds of hundreds of thousands of people escaped Cuba did and many of them risked their lives. Did he use his own labor on the farm or did he use the labor? He used his own labor on the farm, yes. All right, you know yeah, what? I don't know about Cuba. Yeah. Um, you know what? Yeah. I'm not going to say everything Cuba did was good. He risked his life. He left behind family. People were disappearing left and right. Okay. In and the beginning, Castro again, promised again, a great many right, things. He met, he met, he met, he met someone. You can just say left and right. You can just say what's too, generated man. by I the mean, U.S. media. Shit. And everyone here is going to take you for granted because that's what the U.S. media apparatus allows. That's the exact situation that this breeds. Let me say, I'm not relying on just. U.S. media information. I'm also relying from for first-hand situation of people escaping from communism, and he and it's been solely U.S. media. But this is first-hand accounts from people escaped communism from Cuba. Them saying these stories, not just me or the media or anything else. Also, Cubans in Cuba who didn't escape, as you put it, mostly who mostly black and darker Cubans too. Just who stayed there because they are fine with what the government is doing. I think that their perspective has as much validity as the people who came here. I think they both have bias. I would say they really have much of the freedom to freely travel and to come out here to see and, and tell us about these stories, right? We don't have the, I mean, freedom is a relative term. You know, I think that the, uh, the oppression faced under states is equal to the oppression faced under markets. They're both, they're both oppressive institutions. I've never heard anyone though say like, I risk life and limb to escape uh, capitalism. Right? <laughs> okay, 
what what happens yo, what happens if you don't participate thing. in capitalism you starve it, yeah you starve to death Seriously. if you don't want to participate in traditional capitalist means i know a lot of people who didn't want to get a job and then so as an escape they did like the only thing available to them which was selling weed and now they're in prison that's like that's not a freedom you I, you know you're not voluntarily this participating is, this is, i agree yeah and that's the state that's the state passing those laws that's okay. the that's government right and we're very much from pretty much against the, this government too that's a war on peaceful people right on, on plants okay, right yeah but you're trying to re i mean i assume you're like uh libis you're an anarcho capitalist bro free market anarchist no, that's no, not no, no. you're just a capitalist man you're just, you're just a capitalist that's nothing there's Don't nothing anarchist can you define, about, can you define capitalism Asia, uh okay the Anyways, private ownership of the means of production all right so means of production can mean like my own body right no, no. what it means no labor, it body. means it means fucking factories and land and shit things man that produce things, things like that produce computer. commodity yes okay. the, the factory that made your computer yes that no, is I mean, the me means owning my own computer no. and creating my own livelihood through my computer thanks so much for the lecture that you provided i think it's kind of always kind of good enlightening to see like a lot of people talk about like the ills of communism because it's kind of like you said it's weird to see here in the united states uh fascination with it you can say with among students uh, what would you have to say to like like fascination with maoism for example with uh, american students here with with, with communism of that kind Yes, uh, the Maoist era actually is a huge scar in my father's generation. I think because um, it was so long ago, so a lot of uh, American youth are not really aware. But I think the easiest way is to talk and to really read stories, re read the truths that happened in that era. Mm -hmm. Talk to people who have experience under communism, who have been abused and without ways to speak up for themselves, have their integrity taken away, families destroyed. Communism is not um, a fascinating, um, I mean, ideology. It's it's a real tragedy to humankind, and. For people like me and my family that are still living under the shadow of it, I, I mean, we are the best example. Why communist is completely against human nature, why when I decide to speak up in Canada, my families back in China would be threatened and uh, to the point of self-harm. Yeah. Right. And um, so it's like I've been doing like a reading about it. I think there's a fascinating, an interesting part, like a hundred years bloom or flowers bloom or campaign or something like that. I guess where mm. he tricked a lot of like the liberal arts students or something or poets mm. to come out uh, to be very vocal about the government. And then all of a sudden, all of them are persecuted. Right. Yeah. That's a good way to get people out, to show themselves, to give them confidence, to show their opposition to the government. And they were rounded up at once. That's a trick. Yeah. And it's, it's really nasty. You through these political movements like that and the Tiananmen massacre, the Chinese people's, their dignity just got stripped away again and again to the point right now they don't care about anything at all as long as they can live and make money. And that's really sad. Right. So uh, I think read into history. Read what really happened. It's so important. Don't just follow a... a uh, a tyranny, a tyranny idea, like actually know the truth. Right. The truth is powerful. And thank you so much for your lecture talking about the truth, about the horrors over there. Uh, I think a lot of the stories are kind of very hopeful. There's like a Communist Memorial Foundation here. It's, uh, that's part that, of That's them. That's, that's them, them over there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I think that's, that's great to see uh, out here, especially in D.C. They have the memorial out there as well. Um, to kind of bring truth to, to the light of this kind of darkness that's been hidden, um, especially among uh, the people in China, I hear a lot. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for lecture and uh, coming you. here to the conference. Yeah, thank you very much. Of course.